Yeah, what kind of course? Uh, it's basically about how to self-host courses um, using. Well, I'm going to teach the Teachable side. Matt's going to teach the Thinkific side. Mm -hmm. so, okay, yeah, yeah, I just, I just, I just filmed uh, all the lectures for the Thinkific side. So all I got to do is narrate over them and edit them together. Um, and then nice. I'm doing the Word, WordPress, the inner workings of WordPress and Optimize Press today after this, nice. hopefully. Sweet. Yeah, I'm going to probably start recording, hopefully get all my slides done this week and then record next week. Um, yeah. Nice. Dennis, how are you doing? How's your month? Because I feel like you were saying earlier in the month that you possibly could break your highest month total this this month, but... I broke, that? I broke the total for Black Friday month, November, but my highest month was May of of last, excuse me, May of last year, which was 1200, but I, I beat uh, November. So it's my best month in 10 months, but I went to go send out, I wanted to go send out a uh, final promo announcement. And I guess <laughs> I've already used both of them. So I've just been trying to figure out other ways to, I, I've mostly been sharing our convert kit course because that seems like what I'm seeing the most of the last several days is people being buying that course. So, yeah, we've had a few over the past day, a couple of days, just using coupons that we like have have. So that's cool. Uh, yeah, I, I think because yeah. we launched at the very beginning of April, me too. I was like thinking about doing a promotion, and then I realized that I've already used both of my promotions as well. <laughs> yeah, I know. I was like. Dang it, now I got to figure something else out. But you know what? I might send something to my mailing list, but we'll see. I, I, every time I send something to the mailing list, I get nervous that somebody's going to unsubscribe. But that's pretty normal for that to, you know, happen. Yeah. Um, so I, I was you know. so confused about ConvertKit when I got my bill this past week because they charged me $52. What? And I was... I was like so confused because I was like, how am I getting charged? I, I have more than a thousand subscribers now. But yeah. I was like, how am I getting charged more than $49 for having under 3000? And they sent me this confusing message saying, well, we take the, you're on the 19, $29 plan for the first half of the month. And then once you p passed a thousand subscribers, you're on the three, 3000 plan. So add together, that's $52. But I was like, that just doesn't make sense why I would pay more than $49 in a month for having less than 3,000 subscribers. But I figured it out. Because Tax. they they it was conf they didn't clarify that I had passed 1,000 subscribers last month, so in March. So oh. I was actually paying more for Mar extra for March when I had passed the... 1000 threshold so mm -hmm. anyways it was if i figured it out it just was confusing and they weren't yeah very helpful. That, <laughs> uh, sorry about that i know that some of the people are probably fairly new or or maybe they know email more than they know mathematics or something <laughs> phil how yeah. are you doing this month how, how is did you check to see how many people uh, enrolled on tuesday when when amazing.com launched your courses is does amazing have a dashboard where i can see that uh yeah i'll give you the link after the show <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I, think they, I think they do well i know they they have like a document or something that has like the minutes or something is that the one you're talking about yeah but they probably update that like once a month right yeah that's what i thought so i haven't checked amazing but um I mean, Udemy is definitely down for me. It's actually my lowest month since July of 2015. Actually, yeah, so I might hit July of 2015's number, but it's still under. Yay! Under. Hey, Rob. Uh-oh. Are you able to hear us? No, I can't I can. hear him. Uh-oh. Well, can you hear me now? Yeah. 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 Hey. Yeah, I see, um, hold on. Can you hear me now? Yep. yep. Okay. But just that's the um, just the mic, Lee. 
So right, um, I'm going to, I'm going to leave then and let you guys do your show. Thanks for having me on Rob. What's up? And I'll be oh, listening. Phil. Nice talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Phil. Hello. Thanks, Phil. All right. Great. Thanks everybody for hanging out with us while we get, uh, while we got everything situated. Hey, Rob, thanks for joining us. Hey, Dennis. So sorry, okay. man. I am so sorry. This is like, I mean, I'm a, I'm a month late. And then um, when, when it came time, uh, my internet decided to, to die on me. So uh, I, 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 I am so sorry. Twice. That's okay. Sorry, time. Hey, too. you're here now, and we Thank have uh, more view, more live viewers than we did at the beginning when Phil was here. So it's it's okay. We picked up a few. <laughs> oh, so yeah, Phil, Phil bought them all in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, now they're leaving. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. So let's go ahead and get started here. So everybody, thanks for joining us. So just a little bit about Rob. Rob, Rob, Rob is a um, Udemy instructor or online teacher who is also a best-selling author on Amazon. He also started off a um, long time ago with uh, graphic design. He's a great guy, and he also has um, – he also lives the lifestyle that a lot of us want to live, which is the freedom to be able to go where we uh, would like to work from. He is currently joining us. Um, I believe it's Chiang Mai, Thailand, and he wants to help you have that same kind of success. So we're going to talk to him today and see what he's been up to since it's been a while. Matt, you want to go ahead and start off? So, I mean, I think we're all wondering, what have you been up to since since we last talked what are the cool things that Rob Cobb yeah. is working on? <laughs> um, yeah, quite a lot, actually. I can't remember when it was we, we last talked, but I think it was over a year ago, was it? Yeah. Um, yeah. And, uh, well, since then, I've been to Czech Republic, Germany, um, Austria, actually, and Slovakia, Thailand, and probably I've been to a few countries in Asia, as well as the UK. Um and um, yeah, I've been traveling and working at the same time. Not always easy, always challenging, but in an interesting way. Um, I've, uh, I've been doing courses um, while I travel. I mean, I, I've been doing a course today. Look, I've got my mic here. I, got, I, didn't, I, I did some videos in here. It's like um, it's th this window, um, when it's daylight, um, I can do videos there and uh, shines to this beautiful woodwork. In, in this uh, in this lovely condo room I've got here in China. Nice. So I'm able to work, um, but you know sometimes everything goes wrong, and you know you know how it is, um, like today with the internet, for example. Um, but uh, that's just all part of the fun. And yeah, I've been um, creating courses. I haven't been writing books, um, and I've la I'm launching a new product on Amazon FBA, which I can't tell you what it is, but it's uh, it's a big new venture, and sorting out trouble with my um, membership site. So that's causing me a lot of bother at the moment. So um, yeah, gosh, what's that just come up there? My my face. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody yeah. posted a, a link to your unknown. website. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I put a link to your website yeah. there so people could see that. That's one of the cool new features of Blab is that you can do that to kind of, you know, show off stuff as you're talking so people can kind of have an idea of what we're talking about. But, um, yeah, I, I, you know, I've been following, like, your, your travels and all of that. Um, when you went to the Czech Republic, it's beautiful photos. And it's like, I, I know that those are some of the places around the world. Like, I think that that's like got a really, um, it's really affordable to, to live in a place like that as well as travel, but um, looks real nice in the summertime, not so much, uh, I guess, in the wintertime, because I know that that's one of the reasons why you're in Chiang Mai is because you're from London and, you know, it's like, you know, that I lived in the Seattle area. So I know what the weather is like cold and dreary at times during the winter months. So I can see why you want to travel and live in places like Chiang Mai. Yeah, well, actually, this isn't this isn't a good month to be in Chiang Mai at all. It's it's like um, 
you, uh, you're American, so you'll, you'll want Fahrenheit. So it's and I've got I've got I've got all the I've got all the, the figures here. So it's 106 Fahrenheit in Chiang Mai. It's also got a bit of pollution yeah. at the moment. I don't want to put anyone off, um, but uh, you're probably better off being in the south of Europe at this time of year rather than in south southeast Asia. It's like the hottest wow. month. And soon, um, soon the, the rain's going to come, and that will bring the temperature down a little bit. And I'm going to go to Cambodia again uh, very soon because um, my visa is up in Thailand soon, so I've got to do that. Um, but, um, yeah, I mean, it is, it is fantastic that you can, and I think next year I'll do it better, go to different parts of the world at the correct time of the year instead of going to them at the wrong time of the year. Yeah, now with the digital nomad well, course, or yeah, well, I obviously need to take one instead of <laughs> instead of doing one myself. Yeah, yeah, I I know what you mean because it's like for me, I don't like it during the summertime here in Idaho because it gets hot. It's not humid, but it gets very dusty, and then we get forest fires, and then it can get smoky. I like spring and I like fall. Um, I would rather be on the coast during the um, summer months here or in the Seattle area. But then, you know, it switches back to the, the rainy and all of that. And I know Matt, like, what was it, two two winters ago in Boston, they had that unbelievable amount of snow. I don't think I would. I love snow, but I don't think I would want to be buried alive in snow for for months on end. So the, the digital nomad lifestyle lets people, you know, go wherever you want, as long as you have a reliable internet connection, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And um, case in point today, um, uh, I haven't actually. I tell you what, I'm doing. The, I'm doing it through my uh, mobile. That's what I'm doing. Oh, cool. Currently. So you, so you got, um, yeah, little little tricks like that will be coming in my forth, forthcoming. Digital no no Yeah, it's a course. good quality picture um, too, actually. Gosh, I mean that's amazing because you look great and I look uh, bad from where I'm sitting. Yeah, I shave, so, so. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I noticed that. The, the video's shaved. coming in good though, because your your face moves uh like normal and mine kinda if I move my face it's it lags a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Well, no, you're you're looking good as well, Matt. Nick. Don't don't. Yeah, we're, we're coming in live from that kitchen there. So. <laughs> like, we're gonna have the we're, we're gonna do the cooking with Matt show, which um, <laughs> I won't say anything, but he's got some cool stuff that he's done with some with some uh, cooking stuff. So hey, so um, I mean, you've been doing this stuff for quite a while with the online courses and combining it with your your books where do you think that you stand out more than others what what um, advice can you bring to others out there looking for the success that you've had yeah um good question i remember that from um our little document earlier uh yeah i i i said at the time uh, i don't do a course I, I wouldn't ever do a course on something that i didn't know how to do and and even if I knew how to do it, um, I would like to do a course on something I, I'd done for a while and also that I'd, I'd made money to doing it. So I'd, I'd only started writing about WordPress after I'd been using it for two or three years and, and, had, and started creating uh, websites in WordPress. And then I felt I had the confidence to, to create content around WordPress. Um, and I think people make the mistake of, of trying to think of a course that's popular and then doing that instead of thinking what they're good at and then doing a course, uh, creating content around that. And also, I'd be very specific. I'd go into, you know, um, what you are specifically good at because everyone's got their little kinks. I don't know if that's the right word to use, but everyone's got their own little idiosyncrasies and what they're good at. You know, I might be very good at putting text on an image. It's not a very sexy subject but um you know it's it's something that i i would teach very well um if anyone was interested in it um so i think that's a good idea to just do do um what what you're really good at and be very specific at it and in, and enjoy it yeah i think that those are good points <laughs> thanks dennis thanks rob 
Um, so so go, going about uh, creating the courses that you're really good at, how do you go about actually creating them so that they can generate income on your website? Well, that's, that's, that's the question that, you know, it's going to take me sort of two hours to answer. Um, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's something that I've spent a lot of time on, you know, you, you need a, you need an audience for starters and, um, a, a really good piece of advice is, I mean, every, everyone listening has probably heard this before. Um, you know, just collect email addresses is just the, the, the most important thing, but to do that, you need to create consistent content within a, um, some sort of niche that people would get interested in. And then they'll think, oh, well, this guy seems to know what he's talking about. He can help me, he can help me with this. And then they'll sign up to your list because of that. And, and, uh, and if you've got that, then, then you really can't go wrong. That, I think that's, that is definitely the, the best thing because whenever I send an email out asking people to buy something, they, they will buy it. And, and, um, and that's just, and I've been doing that for years now, and 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 it's just it, it keeps on happening. So um, it's yeah, it's good advice to start the email list as soon as possible and keep it live. Keep emailing them, you know, um, it's very important. Yeah. So so what are you using for your email list? Are you using Mailchimp? Oh, I just oh, I just moved to Active Campaign. That's something that I. Another thing that's going wrong at the moment, um, I'm getting loads of spam bot submissions on my active campaign form, uh, but they've just been very nice and they said that I won't have to pay for them um, because they don't exist. They're not real people, so you don't have to pay for them. So thank you, active campaign, after I was saying some really terrible things about them in a forum <laughs> earlier. Um, so I've moved to active campaign. And we'll see. I, I'm, I'm just getting to grips with it. I, I don't know the first thing about it at the mm -hmm. moment. It doesn't really matter. I, I use MailChimp and Aweber and iContact and a few others. Um, you know, I wouldn't get too worried about the tool. Everyone gets really worried about tools and funnels and, and strategy. Whereas, you know, you, it's most important is just to get the email addresses and keep emailing them. Um, and that's nothing clever. It's nothing, nothing, you know, um, new sexy software that, that that will do this for you. It's just old-fashioned um, emailing, you know. Do you, do you um, set a goal like each month on how many people that you want to sign up for your list? No, I haven't been able to. Uh, that's the frustrating thing because I haven't been able to um, collate that reliably um, because of this spam mm. stuff that I'm getting. Uh, but yes, I, I do I do do that and I have done that and it's been a rather boringly consistent um, in recent years. Um, so, and, it, and I do publish that actually on my business report. So, you know, after my income report, I always do a business report, which nobody ever reads <laughs> because uh, everyone looks at the income report. I know that because I sent an email with two links and everyone clicked on the income report thing. Nobody ever thinks on the business report, thing. <laughs> but the business report has, has all that boring stuff in it about how many followers. Huh. Have I was going to ask that. So, how many followers do you have? Well, in the email yeah. list. Well, at the moment on Active Campaign, it's fifteen thousand wow. or, or more. But but about about four or five thousand of them are spam bots. Yeah. No, it might be more. It, it, I think I might I might have twelve, thirteen thousand in my lists at the moment, um, and there's thousands of, of of spam bots from Russia. Wow, that's crazy! But that's still impressive because um, you know the saying "the money is in the list," and like you said, that you've built this following of people who know, like, and trust you. So when you announce that you've got a new product out it's real easy to convince those people to buy what you have to offer. So um, we can't stress enough like the importance of a mailing list because something like Facebook, you might have a going on Facebook or Twitter, but Facebook and Twitter owns that stuff. And at any minute you could lose those accounts. Whereas a email list, as long as you back it up, it's, it's yours. Indeed. And you also have to pay Indeed. the people. You have to pay Facebook to 
to contact the people who like your page anyway. So, I mean, I guess you're kind of doing that with emails, but I don't know. It just, it just seems more uh, a black and white rules on, you know, if you have this many emails, you get charged this much, but to keep reaching your audience on Facebook, it you have to keep paying like every time, you know? Yeah, I mean, they do make it expensive. The the email, the companies like Aweber, your people, I'm sure, uh, people look at those prices and go, my God, how do they charge that every month, you know? But the thing is, it's the basic investment you'll ever make because you probably won't make that. If you're spending $30, $50 a month, you probably don't even make that much back. But when you're spending $150 a month, then you you because you'll have more than 10,000 addresses, then you'll definitely be making more than that back. Um, so it's one of those things. It's it, it's um, it's about putting money back into your business, but obviously do it prudently and don't don't rush into these these things. But uh, I'm really glad that I I started with email a long time ago. Yeah, and uh, your your favorite subject. Going back a little bit to to tools. I think these are these two questions. I think are a little bit more important and and matter more. Uh, what what hosting are you using? Because I just tested your website and it's it's pretty damn fast. One point nine seconds to load your homepage and and that's impressive. I just compared both of our sites and your site uh, loads quicker than mine. So I'm just wondering what what hosting do you use and what security do you use? Uh, I have Fort Knox type security that I can't tell you about because. No, um, yeah, I I, uh, I use Liquid Web and it's quite expensive. Liquid Web is very expensive. It's a VPS. Um, again, I, I I'm not marvelously techy with all this stuff, um, but uh, it's so far so good on, on that one. I really am quite impressed with them, and they, and they did come recommended by people who who really know their stuff. Do you have a dedicated um, server with them I, or? No, it's, v, it's VPS, which is kind of halfway. It's a little bit like dedicated, uh, but you actually, sh it's virtually private, but you share it. Um, so so you've got your own part of a of a machine. I, I don't know what it means, but uh, it's it's kind of the halfway house between shared and, and dedicated. Um, and, and they can be quite good. I mean, they, you know, you can, you can spend quite a lot of money on VPSs. So, um, you know, um, it, it, it's... Um, it, it, you know, it's quite, I think it's a good option. And you can also go in quite low on VPSs as well. If somebody's getting bored with, not bored, but if somebody's getting frustrated with a shared hosting account, and I've been using a shared hosting account recently, and it's been a nightmare uh, on, on, host, on Bluehost. But it just, it, it just, you just don't know with a shared hosting account. But with a VPS, it will always, it will always be the same. It, it doesn't get, have a bad day. If it's bad, it's bad, and you just need to either get a new one or, or do something to it. So, sorry, to, to answer your question, uh, I have a, um, you, you know, I told you about CDN. I know um, it was in that blog post I, I gave you. Uh, I have a CDN as well, Content Delivery Network, uh, and I use Max CDN. I think that's quite important. Caching plugin, uh, and, um, you know, get the, the host to tell you what caching plugin they want, and and how to set it up so they and then and then and then you'll get exactly the right settings on on super cash or w3 total cash or one of those caching plugins and there are others i know there, there are there are expensive premium ones and to ask you a question about security i have got word fence and um uh you know, I do do, and I've been looking at that with the host as well. I think it's really important to if you see anything strange or you know anything happens, always talk to your host. I've always found host support quite good uh, that way. You know, um, if you keep on at them and, and you and you understand, you know, you ask them what they mean when they when they talk gibberish, not gibberish, but text speak. You know what I mean? Um, so that's yeah. That's my stuff. Hear you, Rob? Can you hear Dennis? I can't. No, I can't hear Dennis. I'm... <laughs> He's laughing. <laughs> okay, it's like one of those things, like where you're just listening and you put yourself.
on mute, you don't have feedback and you forget that you're on mute. I was going to say that um, I use Liquid Web and I know that you got hacked and I use Liquid Web because I got hacked um, on both or actually three of my sites because I was tired of HostGator, which is owned by the same company as Bluehost. And like you said, shared hosting, uh, you're on a server with hundreds of other websites. And so your performance of your website is being downgraded by all of these other sites that people are accessing. And so I was getting, I started getting all of these errors and the site would go down. And, and I had this conversation with, with Matt and I just decided to spend that extra money. And I went with um, uh, security.net. So if I got hacked, they would clean out the malware off the website. And if people aren't uh, familiar with that, it's malicious code that's injected into your website so that it does weird stuff. And Google will take it down out of their search results. And that can be very harmful to your business. So Rob made the right decision because we're going to talk about in a moment about his membership site. And you want to make sure that you're protected. These are just investments that you have to make. You can get like a four ninety five a month hosting plan if you're just starting off or whatever. But if you're making money off of your website and you're serious about business, the thing that I like, Rob, about Liquid Web the most is that you don't hold for support. You get somebody via chat or on the phone within a matter of just a few minutes. You don't wait that long. I, I, to be honest with you, Dennis, I, I didn't even know that. I always do email. Um, but I just, I just find it easier. But that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I yeah, I, I think you know they, they're a good company. They have a good reputation. Mm -hmm. um, but so, I mean, the thing with hosts, they're they're all quite good. But you know, they're they're all much for muchness. But you you need to get the um, the right package and. and um, and learn how to deal with them. I think that's important as well. Yeah, because I have the VPS too. And it's since then, I'm not sure like what the load time is. Mine might be a little bit different because it uses a lot more images uh, on the uh, homepage, but uh, it has loaded faster than the previous version. Um, and I think, Matt, you had mentioned that, that you had said that it had loaded faster. Somebody else did. I don't know. But yeah, so... Um, yeah, I did. Yeah. I mean, you have too many images and things on your website, but that's another, it's loading. It has to load too much data. So it's big and large. And so I don't know, but it, it loads faster. Yeah. So it's anyway, so, seven seconds. <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> I know even though seven seconds, like one, two, I guess seven seconds can be a while. It just doesn't seem that long. So, Hey, so speaking about websites, your membership site earned you something like nine thousand dollars last year. Can you can you speak um, a little bit about like what you were doing? Just let other people know what a membership site is and how they can use that to um, uh, you know m make money. It doesn't necessarily have to be courses. Yeah, um, it's a, a membership site is the most difficult thing I've done online. Um, definitely, hands down. I. I Maybe I just had some bad luck with it. I, I don't know. Um, I did everything wrong. Everything wrong you, you could possibly do, I did it. And I'm still paying. To this day, I'm paying for the mistakes that I made. Um, but don't let me put you off. Um, I did it in the wrong way. But as long as you do it it's simply. Um, so what, what a membership site is, is it protects certain areas of a website. Um, and those areas can only be accessed by people if they want to sign in with their email address for free or they want to pay money. Um, and, and so it's good for delivering video, for example, in video courses. Um, it's also good for getting email addresses, uh, which we were talking about earlier. Um, so um, what I did wrong is probably a good, good place to start. What I did wrong is I tried to create Udemy on my own site. Don't do that. That's a really stupid um, idea. OK. Uh, try and make it as simple as possible. You want you want this stuff? I'll give you this stuff if you give me this money, and 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 then just do that. You know, I'll, if somebody told me that two years ago, that would have saved me just acres of pain. You know, and, and a lot of money. 
Um, I tried to put a, a, a learning management system in there. I, I tried to do six courses straight off the bat. Uh, you know, so stupid. Um, but there we go. We all make mistakes. I also used three different membership site plugins. Um, but that's another story. Not have to pay monthly using Teachable or Thinkific and yeah, I didn't do that. Uh, I, I didn't go that route, and that was probably uh, another bad idea of mine. You just have to pay for the software up front, right? You don't have to pay monthly, right? Yeah, yeah, no, um, uh, no, you do have to pay. Um, you know, with all these, uh, it depends on the membership site plugin that you're using. Um, but uh, the one I'm using at the moment is, oh, it's they're all different and. Also, there's varying levels of, you know, you can you can pay up front, okay, one time, and you've got it for life. But then you might not get the support later on in the later coming years. They want they'll tap you for more money, um, you know, and a lot of them will do that. And it it depends on the model. I think I think uh, wishlist member is probably the cheapest. There's so many of them, and they're all so different, and they're all got different pricing levels as well. Member mouse is, is monthly and quite expensive. DAP is quite expensive, but it's not it's not monthly. But I've just got I, I think I just paid four hundred dollars for the next five years of it. Um, but yes, yeah, things like that. It, it's um, uh, it's it's a minefield. It really is. But uh, I, if you keep it simple um, and 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 um, you know just do, and, and focus on the content. Uh, then, then, then that's the best advice I could give people because it, I, I've spent a lot of time and a lot of money uh, creating that site. Did we go? Did we lose the connection again? Uh, I can't hear. Oh, me. my accident. Sorry. Can you? You can hear me, right? Yeah, okay, I muted me. myself. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So basically, on your membership website. You get traffic to it, you uh, add value and get the email, and then once you have the email, then you just promote to them, and then and then people buy whatever you're selling because they're true fans of you. I guess then my question would be, how do you drive traffic to robcobbin.com? Yeah, well, that's um, um, organic uh, has been the best one over the years. So um, I've created a lot of content. I might have 400 blog posts or something like that on robcabin.com. And um, I'm always trying to come up with, with the title, that, you know, the great SEO titles of the world um, that's going to sort of do really well and, and get loads of people in. Um, but, yeah, so it's, all, but it's a really extra of everything. So there's some social and some... Um, linking that goes on and uh um you know that that's it so it, it's it's really only i haven't ever um done paid traffic uh, i'd love to start and it's um i i just never i i've never found a way of doing that um, so it makes money um so um yeah so so it's creating good content and 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 collecting the emails because i mean people s s are more likely to the people who buy from me that nine thousand dollars that you you said that would have all most of it would have come from emails but some of it would have been organic but um you know a eight, good 80 percent would have been from emails so right, and most people just come from google sorry dennis oh that's okay yeah yeah google would be sort of like mm, the biggest proportion of the traffic and then maybe 50% and then the other 50% is a combination of social and, and other stuff. Hmm. That's a, that's something that I haven't tried yet because like most of my focus is still on Udemy and kind of wanted to get your thoughts on like where Udemy's going. I don't think that you probably are one to hang out in the studio and the faculty lounge that often. And that's probably a good thing. Uh, just kind of, you know, doing your own thing. Where do you think, like, do you think that it's a positive change with the price change? Or do you think that they um, maybe made a mistake by going that route? Are you comfortable with that? 
Yeah, I mean, I'm still comfortable with it. I'd still give them the benefit of the doubt, and, and I would still say that I'm broadly positive about it. As Phil was saying, he's, he's had a bad month on Udemy, and I have, definitely. Um, and, um, you know, uh, if it's going to work, it, it maybe it's going to take a month or so before people realize about it, and they're still growing. So... Um, I, I, I overall, you know, I, I think Udemy is definitely worth sticking with at this at this stage. Um, it, it's such a great place to, to build a brand and an audience anyway, even <laughs> without even without making money. Uh, it's a great place to put your put yourself out there uh, as as a content creator. Um, so um, I was yeah, I was more positive about the change before this month than I am now. Uh, uh, but but I'm 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 going to say that um, I'm still positive about it, and and, and we'll, we'll wait and see. Yeah, you made like I think I saw you made fifty thousand dollars on Udemy last year. So um, maybe talk about that. And uh, are you seeing like when you look at your numbers? Do you look at like I work retail, so we would always look at what we call comp numbers comparable to last year. Do you ever look at that? Yeah, I, yeah. Yeah, more or less. So, so I mean, yeah. Oh, go ahead. So, um, well, <clears throat> the numbers um, I had, well, I, I mean, I, I, there's lots of ups and downs, um, but basically, you know, I, I'm averaging out at 4,000 a month, and I have been on that for, you know, a year and a half, mm -hmm. uh, and maybe – Things were a little, it's maybe um, gone down a bit in that the, my most successful courses were all, uh, were all published around about the same time. And, and so that it's naturally sort of come down. Um, and, and, I've made, and I've made less courses as well, uh, especially this in the last four months or, or, or six months. Um, so so I'm, I'm happy that, that the Udemy income it, it does seem solid uh, compared to a lot of other things. Um, so, so you know, I, I'm extremely. Uh, I, I'm, that's why I'm very supportive, supportive of you and me. Um, and and because I mean, it, it, it's just given me such a great opportunity um, to 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 do other things. Not you know, uh, which is probably not what they want um, to hear me say, but. Um, you know, it, it, the, the level of consistency from Udemy, for me, it, it is, is so impressive um, when you compare it to other other platforms. Good. That's all good information for people who are listening. And, you know, they might be worried, you know, that, um, like you said, there's ups and downs. I know that, like I've told people before that April, you know, people, especially here in the U.S., they're mind is on paying taxes instead of spending income, you know, on things like courses or coffee or whatever. So it may, might be something that surprises people, hopefully. Well, we, we, we'll see, Dennis. I mean, obviously, I, I don't want to put all my eggs in one basket, and that's why I'm doing other things. So I, I would recommend other people do as well. But, um, you know, they are, they are still growing. And, and uh, you know there is a huge, great market for for online courses, and that's and that's growing as well. We'll just have to wait and see where where, where it all ends up. Yeah, true. And, and Rob, how did you? What are what are like two things that I think that you think are most important uh, reasons why you were able to make fifty thousand dollars last year on Udemy? Because I'm you know I'm, like I made. 35 on Udemy last year. So I'd like to, you know, I'd like to get a little bump up to, to 50. <laughs> well, that's good, Matt. You know, 30, 35 grand that you didn't, you wouldn't have had otherwise. It's, it's more or less passive. Um, it, uh, you know, it's, 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 um, it's, it's, it's not, not too bad, I don't think. Not too shabby. Um, it, it's, uh, I think the reason I've done well on Udemy, um, I got in there early. So I was on Udemy at the beginning of 2013, and um, I uh, 
Um, I had an audience already. I had a YouTube channel already, which and I had, I'd been creating video already, so it wasn't the first video I'd ever done. I'd already done 100 videos before I started to do Udemy courses or more. Um, so, so I think those are the reasons that I, I did well on Udemy. Um, and, uh, and that's why I'm looking at other platforms, you know, because I think it's, it was great to be one of the uh, quite early on Udemy. Um, I think people coming on now are probably quite early as well, but um, that, that's a really good start, early first mover advantage and um, having the audience as well. Uh, sorry, Dennis, do you want to ask the next question? Well, yeah, but I wanted to, I see somebody had a question here over in the chat. So why don't we go ahead and we'll uh, discuss that and then we'll go ahead and move on to the next question. So um, someone is asking, why do some experts say that Udemy does not uh, compensate the instructors fairly? So I've been kind of thinking about that myself, but um, what are your thoughts on that? I, I don't know what, I, what what experts are they what are they saying and and what are yeah because yeah, I haven't really uh, heard that I honestly think that their compensation is pretty fair because you and I both write books and we know what Amazon uh, compensates uh, their writers for books I've always thought that for myself that I, I've earned more income with Udemy than anything that I've ever done in the past. And, and like you said, it's such a good platform to get started. And Matt got his start and now he's branching out to other things, including his website, skillhands.com. And then also, you know, putting his courses out on places like Skillshare and you've done the same too. So I think it's a great platform to start with um i don't know if it's necessarily like one that should just focus on udemy it's exactly um i i, I it's it, it's um it's just a platform just like anyone else and uh they all got their different ways of doing things and, and commission structure uh, and um i think the less time you spend bothering about that the better because you know at the end of the day um, if it's not worth your while, then, then you're going to leave. And, and, and um, you, you don't really want to look at the percentages and, and worry about that. I just, just want to look at whether it's worth your while, do you enjoy it? Or, or, is there the, the audience there and, and, can you, and, and are they interested in you? And, and are you making money there? That, you know, that, that's who I, I ever think about. And to, to add my two cents, I, I think Udemy compensates me very fairly. I'm on 10 other different platforms and Udemy pays me arguably the most out of any of those platforms. So if we're looking at what the, what the market will pay for my content and how much royalties I get back, I think Udemy is above the curve for any other offering that's out there. Yeah, I think they're, I think they're pretty... I think it's a pretty good deal, and uh, if you if you don't like it as well, you can always uh, try and get money to be a Udemy affiliate as well. <laughs> yeah, that works out well too. <laughs> yeah, I, I just I, I think like a lot of the frustration that I see in the studio in the faculty lounge is people automatically assume that they put a course on Udemy and that Udemy is going to promote their course for them without them doing anything. And that's not the case um, with anything out there, With even with Amazon. It, you have to do a lot of that legwork yourself. And Udemy, if, they, if their algorithms catch on and they see that you're a course is doing well, then they're going to see that and maybe consider jumping in and promoting it too, because they benefit from that. But there are hundreds of courses and hundreds of instructors, so they can't just promote every course that comes onto the platform. I, I, I don't even know like how many new courses get launched daily, but I would imagine that it's quite a few. Matt's just silent yeah. and smiling. <laughs> what are you smiling about? Are you chatting with someone? Because it's silent in here. I, I was just Googling how many courses are on Udemy now, and then maybe I would oh. compare the numbers to uh, a previous time. 
Um, do you want me to ask the next question, Dennis? So you got it. Well, yeah, you can go ahead. Okay, so so Rob, uh, I, we, we know you're on Udemy, Skillshare, uh, Kindle. You have your own membership website, and I'm sure you're on other uh, places on, on the internet. Uh, can you tell our listeners what additional ways that you make money online that you haven't necessarily written about? Oh, God, I've probably written about all of them um, because I'm, I'm always looking at things to write about. Um, but, yeah, I mean, uh, I also um, make money from uh, clients. I have clients uh, from my web design business, graphic design business, and um, I, that's fully – it's not fully automated. I was going to say that it's fully automated. That's a complete lie. Um, but I try, I try and fully automate that. And, um, yeah, I've got a as – I, as I mentioned earlier, I've got a product on Amazon. Uh, which is I'm hopefully um, quietly confident about. And um, I'm on a lot of other platforms. And, and uh, um, yeah, there's the sort of little things coming here and there. So if you're blogging and you've got an audience, um, you can make money as an affiliate. Uh, and and I, I make a little bit of money, not much, but uh, um, a little bit of money for stuff that I really uh, – I, I really – I really like, I use every day, so like Genesis, for example, um, or Wishlist Member, something that I've used and I've taught people how to use in videos on, on YouTube, really, um, and, and blog posts. So the affiliate, affiliate income is something that can, it is, it is, it's a very good thing because it can run on, alongside your content creation. Um, and, and there's other platforms, and, uh, and, um, and if you're on YouTube, if you really get good on YouTube, you, you can make you can make a lot of money from from YouTube just just from AdSense. Because do I mean AdSense? Yeah, AdSense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, adverts are in YouTube. Yeah, you you know, like uh, I, some people have been talking about that because um, Lindsay from Udemy, the challenge for the weekend or homework was going in and. Uh, just spicing up your YouTube channel and somebody had commented that they didn't think that AdSense was worth it because um, just that um, it would seem to drive traffic away from your videos. Just using the videos just themselves to drive traffic to maybe your courses or um, something else. But I don't know. It's like I make like a hundred dollars maybe every three months from AdSense, and I don't have like a ton of videos out, but I have several hundred out. What do you think about that? You think that it, it's a good thing, or maybe yeah, not so I, much? I um, no, I, I I don't think it drives traffic away from from your content um, mm -hmm. at, at all. I think you're going to get people. Um, at, it may be not worth it in that you don't make that much money from it and and, uh, and you can build your channel more successfully without it. Uh, but then again, I think, um, I think I'm think i quite used to seeing ads on YouTube now, so I don't really hold it against anyone if they have ads on their channel. Um, so so uh, I, 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 I'm, on the, I'm quite easy about it. I, I wouldn't worry about putting them on and I wouldn't worry about taking them off. Yeah, I, I I agree with that because I am totally aware that YouTube is providing people with a free service and that's how they pay to run the platform. And you don't have to like run ads all over the place. YouTube gives you control over where those ads actually run. So I was going to ask you, so you still do some graphic design stuff for some clients and I had an appointment with a, a client yesterday because, you know, every now and then I'll do some WordPress kind of thing. And in a way, I don't mind that because if I'm going to teach about WordPress, I still have to keep familiar with what's going on because that stuff changes all the time. Do you think that your time would be utilized better somewhere else instead of still doing that stuff? Uh, it, taking that time that you're using to meet with clients or consult and using it uh, for, 
you know, creating products or courses? Dennis, that is just such a good question. It's such a good point. You know, so on one hand, you've got to keep it, you've got to keep in there, especially with WordPress. Um, if you want to teach something, it, it's better to know how it works with a client than, than it is just, just sort of reading up on it and doing a little bit yourself and doing it for yourself. If you've done it for five, to six different clients, then you're going to know what the clients want. You're going to know what makes money and you're going to teach that subject so much better. However, mm -hmm. and, and an entrepreneur, you, you've got to out, you've got to get rid of so much stuff. You've got, you've got to, um, your time is, is, is the most precious commodity. And, and I'm forever trying to think of ways that I can not do work. Um, and, um, you know, so somebody told me, you know, one of these millionaires, um, I, think it, I think it was him, uh, here in Chiang Mai, he, he told me not to, and that was about a year ago, over a year ago, he said, you shouldn't be doing that. And um, so I, I'm, uh, I'm either, yeah, so that's, that's a decision that's constantly playing out in my mind. Uh, what, what to get rid of and, and what to concentrate on. Um, and, and 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 you know, I mean, it might come. A, there, might, there might come a time. Hopefully, that well, there will come a time where I'll stop doing that, and I'll stop doing Udemy as well because I'll, I'll be on to the next thing. Uh, it's just it's just knowing when. I've seen people jump too quick, you know, um, and I've I've seen people hold themselves back. I've definitely held myself back because um, I I haven't invested in 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 I haven't reinvested some of my profits. Uh, which I could have put into advertising and, and growing my, my audience. So, you know, I've definitely made mistakes. Um, I, I've definitely made mistakes in terms of uh, too, too low, um, uh, uh, too, too, you know, lowering my sights too much. I, I, I should have thought bigger. Um, so, but that's a great question, um, Dennis. And, and that, that's just essential to, to entrepreneurship, I think. Um, and it's a tricky one that I obviously don't get right all the time. Yeah, because I mean, I sometimes like meeting with clients and just kind of um, challenging myself with their problems and being able to solve their problems to be able to help their business. You know, that's good, Dennis. I'm sure. Yeah, you know, I'm sure that's a good thing. If it, you know, if, if it is challenging you. And, and you and you enjoy it, then I'm sure it's a good thing. And um, I think enjoying it is really, and I think that's two two really important things as well. Being challenged and, and enjoying the work, um, and, and trying to move on from there. Uh, but you know, I, I, it's it's just it's so interesting actually the, 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 that that question I think, um, and and, and uh, you know, it's something I'll come back to loads and loads of times in, in the future. I know because. There's so much I'm doing now that is, I mean, every, I mean, now compared to last year, I'm, I'm doing completely different work. Um, and, and, you know, that, and, and, and some of the courses I, I've done, they were done sort of three years ago. And I'm thinking at, at some stage, I'm going to have to sort of make them private because it, it's, they're just going to be irrelevant to my current experience. So mm -hmm. it's so interesting the way things change. And this, it's just gonna it's just gonna speed up as your business grows as well. Yeah. Hey, I have one more question for you before um, Matt asks the next question. I was wondering, do you enjoy uh, creating courses more, or do you enjoy writing books more? Oh God, no, I don't know. Um, I, I don't think I enjoy. Um, uh, no, they both got their uh, got, both got their their good points. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I, I don't know if I can choose. Actually, yeah. I'd love to. I started like I know. I don't know. Um, I don't know. I like both of them because they're both creative. Yeah, they they both have their their challenges. Um, <laughs> completely different media, but um, different challenges. So, thanks. I appreciate that, um, Matt. Go ahead. Uh, do you ever get worried that uh, some or uh, probably not all, but some of your passive income streams drying up and your income drops significantly where you're not necessarily making it enough money anymore to make a living. Yeah, I, 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 it's um, a little bit, um, but, but 
more than that, I definitely want to. I, my plan is to increase uh, the, the passive income that I have because it's definitely not a, not a good thing to have a, a, a level a level uh, passive income that's um, plateaued out um, because I just don't think that is um, conducive to good business. I think I think you should always be in, in improving. Also, as as a content creator, I, I want to give the people the, the the people that read my blog, I want to give them new ideas to make to make money or to improve their businesses or to improve their lives. So that's why I'm going on into different areas uh, because it's, it's more interesting and it will help more people if I discover some other way of making money. Um, and uh, and so, for example, you know, I mean, the opposite the opposite side of that coin is to say, oh, I'm going to make five thousand every month on Udemy for the rest of my life so I might as well just go to the beach and, and I think that would be a mistake that's I have kind of made I didn't necessarily go to the beach but I definitely stopped working as hard as I did before because I just you know took the Udemy income for granted and and my Udemy income fell by 50 percent so now I think it's it's very smart to I uh, constantly worry that somebody's going to take your market share doing what you're doing and and you're not going to be able to make enough money to make a living anymore because somebody somebody's going to uh, maybe buy a course, see what and then see what they can do better and try to make a better course and try to take you down. So somebody's out there to take you down, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't say, you know, I don't want to say worry, constant worry. Um, you know, it's, I, I'd like to remain a, um, slightly more positive than that. Yeah, but uh, yeah, it, it can happen. And um, but for whatever reason, I think just just the plateauing is, is is not a good good thing. So we're almost to the end of this show, and I was thinking about one of the things that I don't know if you were joking about it um we mentioned thai food we haven't even talked about thai food what are some of your favorite uh, thai food dishes because you know that i love thai food and we have even here in idaho we have thai food restaurants but there would probably be no place better than thailand to get um, authentic thai food so what would you recommend well, I, we've had this conversation well many, many times actually on Facebook, Dennis. And, yeah. and um, you know, uh, I actually I, in northern Thailand, um, it's much more spicy than it is in Idaho. Uh, <laughs> I should imagine. <laughs> I should imagine. Um, so we have koi, cow soy here. Um, that's very nice. Uh, papaya salad. Mm. Uh, tom yang gong. I uh, thought, yeah, that's the spicy, sour, sweet. Um, prawn soup, yeah, which sounds disgusting, but it's really nice. And and um, I think um, I think spicy food is actually a little bit addictive. I think all the Thais are actually addicted to chili um, because you know they eat it until um, it hurts. You know, and and, um, and 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 you can't. You know, you, you say you say to in a restaurant, you say um, not spicy, please, just not spicy. You say it in Thai, and and then it's, it, a dish comes back, and it's kind of medium spicy. <laughs> so, medium spicy to Thai is, is is just like no taste at all. Uh, and to me, it's like oh. Uh, but I really love I really love the, the hot hot food. Um, I've, I've just become just a little bit addicted to it, and so um, yeah, I, I go for the curries: red curry, green curry, masaman curry, panang curry. Um, and and the other ones I said oh, earlier. I love Penang curry. <laughs> yeah, that one you can eat. Oh, you can or, eat or, or Masiman Masiman beef curry. Yeah, yeah. Well, chicken, fish. Yeah, Patsy, I like Patsy you too. How, what's that? You've been to Thailand, Dennis? I would like to go there. I haven't heard of half of these. <laughs> Really? You should have Patsy yeah. Yu. I mean, of course, like the big Thai food dish in America would be Pad Thai, you know, which is just a traditional noodle dish. But I, 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 
I like it because um, Rob had talked about that. Like you just don't eat that stuff over there. You eat some of these other dishes that he's talked about. And I like swimming Rama, which is, um, you know, like broccoli steamed rice with um, peanut sauce over the top of it and ma- making me hungry for Thai food again. And there's a there's a new food truck actually just down the road that actually serves Thai food. And I went to go try it the other day, but they only took cash. And I was like, I don't carry cash on me. So I didn't get to try it. So Matt, you want to wrap it up there with some of our last questions? So so Rob, what advice do you have to our for our listeners that are thinking about leaving their nine to five jobs for the lifestyle of somebody like you, a digital nomad who makes money online, gets to travel wherever the hell that they want to go, if you have a visa? What advice do you have to them? Yeah, um it's a good question, right? Well, so the first thing is just like um uh, you know, be be sensible with your money because uh, it took me a while. I, it took, took us all a while to, to to get away from the work, and it's not all about traveling. Because I mean, I I I left work and I was living in a semi-detached house in North London, um, and, and I had a very sort of uh, um, boring life. But that I, I was working from home, and, and uh, so you can do. You can do. It doesn't matter where. It doesn't. You know, the, the digital nomad thing isn't actually that important the important thing is just to get money from doing work at home uh, or doing work away from your job Um, and then and then you also another important thing is to um, keep a handle on your expenses you know don't go out and eat a lot of authentic Thai stir fry noodles perhaps you uh, if it's expensive so you know um, cancel your cable a subscription um have a look maybe maybe you don't need a car and don't don't don't, don't, bo- don't borrow money just don't borrow money uh pay off all your debts um and then it's amazing how little money you, you need and then if you can support yourself in the business um then the only thing the only thing you need in business is time so if you've got if, you, if, if you've got time uh to make some really stupid mistakes uh like i have then, then sooner or later you'll become a success. Um, so, so it's really it, it, you know, people. Uh, uh, people listen to all these shows about successful people, and then they think, "Oh, I'm not a success in six weeks." You know, take um, whereas I think they should put a more a little bit more time into it. Um, so, so that's you know what I did. I I I, I cut my my work to sort of part time uh, for two years. Uh, while I was making money at home, until I was ready to stop working, and then and then I and then I could support myself and and my uh, all the other things I needed to, to pay for, uh, I could do that um, after two years. You're on mute. <laughs> having patience in business and having discipline as well as probably two of the most important skills that you can have. Yeah. Indeed, indeed. Yeah. Uh, I, it's patience. It's, it's the thing because I think people get bored of what they're doing and then they move on to another thing. Whereas if you stick at one thing, uh, sooner or later you're going to see success, and then you'll be able to put that into uh, uh, you know pivot into something else. Yeah. Hey, hey, Rob. Somebody had a question here for you um, about that the British papers are full of stories about violence against British tourists and Thailand. Is that is that something you're seeing? Okay, remember what I was saying about don't don't uh, waste your money. <laughs> don't 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 read newspapers. It's very simple, and then, <laughs> and then you'll you'll never have to worry about anything in, in, in your in your life. So no, it's 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 um, I'm it's it, 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 Thailand is an extremely safe place for for just about anyone, including British tourists. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I, I know, like, sometimes, um, you know, like a friend of mine, she talks about Mexico or whatever, that she wouldn't want to go to Mexico because it's stuff she sees about violence and all of that. And I'm like, that kind of stuff happens in America, too, you know? Yeah, 
you just have to you have to be vigilant and and just keep an eye out for stuff and be always aware of your surroundings but it's a good question though all right so let's see we've got uh i think that that's pretty much it um do we have we, we asked them about like just like at the point where you just go for it uh, when you want to leave your nine to five job and I just would say that to that, like, I mean, for myself, I didn't even really have a nine to five job. I was unemployed and I built what I have now from writing a book and then discovering Udemy and building websites. Like we talked about the WordPress websites, taking my knowledge that I have of WordPress and Matt, the same thing, he was going to school he started utilizing eBay to earn income while going to school. And then that became courses that he created and learning other stuff like Amazon and, and Rob with his graphic design. I know his story about commuting on the, it's called the tube, right? The subway yeah. there in London yeah. and, and not really enjoying the rainy winters and stuff like that so he took his knowledge and created courses wrote books and took control of his destiny now talking to us from uh chain man chain man Chiang Mai, thailand Chiang Mai, yeah. where the noodles are right there on this screen which yeah i'm getting i'm getting hungry now i i I'm think i'm going to drive down the street here when we're done and go check out that food cart so so let's go ahead so we know that uh rob besides your website anywhere else um where people should check you out online or is that the go-to that's the go-to place just just google me rob coven great and you'll, you'll, you'll get, you'll get me. great and matt do you have any final thoughts and where people can find you online yeah, my name is Matt Bernstein from skillhance.com. And if you follow the link that I'm about to give you, I'm sure we're about to flood a couple links for you. If you follow that link, you can get some free courses about selling on eBay, teaching on Udemy, and some practical business advice as along with the rest of the episodes on the Make Money Online show. Or if you don't want to sign up for the website, I'm sure Dennis has a link where you don't have to give him any information to look at the the make money online shows. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's what I was going to post in there. This is a, if you want to watch the replay of this uh, show, once we're done, if you're just joining us, then if you go to dennisjsmith.com forward slash blab, the replay will be there probably within the next hour. And all of our past shows will be there. Uh, you can connect with us there and you can sign up so if you want notifications there'll be a pop-up and you can we'll let you know when we have future shows which our next one is next thursday with chris greenwood who should have been our guest last week and uh, he is a musician who is a udemy instructor who has built this online uh, passive income teaching other musicians so i'm happy that we're able to have him next week i just need to keep reminding him that it's at wait 11 is our normal time. We're earlier this week because of, of Rob's um, location. So you can find the Make Money Online show Thursdays at 10 a.m. Pacific and 1 p.m. Eastern time. So thanks, everyone, for taking time out of your day to join us. And thanks, Rob, for joining us. It's always a pleasure to chat with you live and on Facebook. So, so thank you. Always a pleasure to talk to you, Dennis. And uh, and Matt and uh, thanks a lot for having me on. Thanks, Rob. It's always a great time having you on, and I enjoyed the hour and fifteen minutes that we had, or I guess an hour. But uh, have a good night. Yeah, I, I was I was late. I remember. Yeah. All right. Goodbye, everybody. Have okay. a great, great day, great evening, wherever you're at. Take care. Cheers, Bye guys. Now.